It lays the predicate and the foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer and ultimately to control the weather and he who controls the weather will control the world. Extinction is the rule. Survival is the exception. A quote from Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan also said this, to argue that the current extinction event could be averted if people just cared more and were willing to make more sacrifices is not wrong, exactly. Still, it misses the point. It does not much matter whether people care or don't care. What matters is that people change the world. To clarify Carl Sagan's final statement about people changing the world, Sagan refers to the Anthropocene era, the age of man. Human activity has drastically disrupted the former balance of Earth's life support systems. Man's intentional intervention in the climate system is at the top of the list. This is saying a lot, given the magnitude of destructive forms of human activities. We have been unimaginably poor stewards of this formerly thriving miracle planet. Why are populations so in the dark about the severity and immediacy of what is unfolding? Those in power do not want populations to understand what is about to befall them. Consider this, secrecy, once accepted, becomes an addiction. That from Edward Teller, an individual that certainly knew a great deal about government secrecy and nefarious government activity. Consider that our once thriving planet has become a toxic prison. The bars that trap us are clearly visible to any that bother to look up. We live so often under grid pattern skies of sprayed toxic particulates that are part of the climate engineering insanity. An activist titled Park Bench stated this on one of the geoengineeringwatch.org blogs. He said, while I am laughing at you, laughing at me, thinking I am crazy because death is all around you and you pretend it is not there, all parents are suiciding their own children for a life of pleasure. A slow death as they laugh and enjoy a happy new year and call reality a conspiracy theory. Consider this report from Australia. This was just sent by a very dedicated anti-climate engineering activist, Caesar Behlul, who, by the way, traveled all the way from Australia to Reading to continue his education on the geoengineering issue. And unfortunately, many in this area who are aware of the climate engineering issue and whose homes even burnt to the ground were not able to make an event in their hometown. But thankfully, we had a full auditorium from people who came from around the world, from many places as far away as Australia. Again, our thanks to Caesar Behlou, who just sent us this report. Today, we experience another radical temperature swing. This is in Australia, just over five hours. At 2.11 p.m. Australian time, the temperature was 47 degrees C. That's 116.6 degrees Fahrenheit. At 7.22 p.m., the same day, the temperature plummeted to 73.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Radical weather whiplash. Climate engineering is creating radical weather and temperature whiplash scenarios all over the globe. The materials being used in climate engineering operations are highly toxic. From heavy metals like aluminum and barium to toxic chemical ice nucleating elements being used to create engineered winter events with enough moisture. All of these materials are cascading down through our breathable air column. All of it we are inhaling with each and every breath we take. Each and every one of us. Go outside on a clear night after a day of sky hazing climate engineering operations. Shine the brightest flashlight you have straight into the sky. Look into the beam and see what's coming down. There are so many particulates, it often looks like it's snowing. You have to see this to believe it. Here's the point. Just because these particles are not visible in the light of day does not mean they are not there. Ignorance of what we are inhaling will not exempt us from the consequences of the climate engineering fallout. The entire web of life is being irreparably contaminated, systematically poisoned. This is not my opinion. It's a lab test proven fact that is backed up by tests from all over the globe. NASA satellite images reveal global skies and cloud cover that are completely altered 
and unimaginably alarming compared to decades now past. Meteorologists know climate engineering is occurring. Agencies know. Academia knows. If any of these so-called experts is capable of being able to walk and chew gum at the same time, they know. If they're not clinically blind, they know. So why are they silent? The federal illegal gag order on all National Weather Service and all NOAA employees is a start, but there is much more to the equation. How many know and are either actively or passively participating in the climate engineering insanity or its cover-up? But wait, some claim such programs could never be kept a secret. That is their excuse for denial. Can that claim be refuted? The answer is absolutely yes. In addition to the Manhattan Project example of government secrecy with tens of thousands of involved, here's another historical example to cite. The following quotes were transcribed from the documentary titled The Most Dangerous Man in America, the film about Daniel Ellsberg. Why was Ellsberg so dangerous to the U.S. government? Because he had the courage and the moral fortitude to expose the truth. Here's a few quotes that make clear the fact that the ranks of our criminal government and the criminal corporations it serves are filled with obedient, honorless order followers. My thanks to Vasily from Australia for transcribing these quotes. L.B. Johnson, Lyndon B. Johnson, by the way, Lyndon Johnson, the film of whom is at the front of every single weekly global alert news broadcast. Lyndon Johnson ranting and raving like a lunatic in 1962. Then Vice President Lyndon Johnson, later President Lyndon Johnson after Kennedy was assassinated, raving that we had the power to control the weather and that he who controls the weather controls the world. In 1962, and we have people denying it today. We have academia denying it today. But let me continue with these quotes that reveal just how easily it is to hide unimaginably massive crimes with a population and with individuals that are all too willing to go along to serve their own personal purposes. Lyndon Johnson said this, we still seek no wider war, referring to Vietnam. Daniel Ellsberg stated this, these are direct quotes, no wider war, question mark, as I found out day by day at the Pentagon, that was our highest priority, preparing a wider war, speaking of Vietnam, which he expected to take place immediately after the election, Johnson expected. Lyndon B. Johnson then said this as well. It is a war that I think ought to be fought by the boys of Asia to help protect their own land. And for that reason, I haven't chosen to enlarge the war. In response to that, Daniel Ellsberg said this on the record. In response to President Johnson saying he wasn't going to enlarge the war. From Ellsberg. And that was a conscious lie. We all knew that inside the government. And not one of us told the press or the public or the electorate during that election. It was a well-kept secret by thousands and thousands of people, including me. Thomas Schilling, RAND analyst and Nobel laureate, said this. Not long after the release of the Pentagon Papers, I was at a conference at UCLA. There were at least a dozen people from RAND at the conference, and not one of them would shake hands with Dan, referring to Daniel Ellsberg. Not one would sit near him. They treated him as a, and Schilling pauses, a traitor. For Daniel Ellsberg telling the truth, he was immediately treated as a traitor from all those around him. Final excerpt is this from Daniel Ellsberg. I was typhoid Mary. I was a leper with a bell around my neck. I have come to realize the fear of being cut out from the group of people you respect and whose respect you want and normally expect that keeps people participating in anything, no matter how terrible. So to summarize again everything I just covered, from the documentary film, The Most Dangerous Man in America, referring to Daniel Ellsberg, who is considered the most dangerous man in America by our government because he knew the truth and had the courage to tell it. And how was he treated? By his peers, from those all around him that were participating in this system for their own personal benefit. And all of them treated him like a leper because he dared to tell the truth. For how long have the lies and deceptions been festering in our country? Far longer than the vast majority will even begin to ponder. Stop, listen, and consider to this telling quote from John Swinton 
A New York Times journalist and editor from the 1800s, Swinton made the following statement, which is more true today than ever before. Quote, there is no such thing in America as an independent press, unless it is out in country towns. You're all slaves. You know it, and I know it. There's not one of you who dares to express an honest opinion. If you expressed it, you would know beforehand that it would never appear in print. I am paid $150, again, this is during the 1800s, for keeping honest opinions out of the paper I'm connected with. Others of you are paid similar salaries for doing similar things. If I should allow honest opinions to be printed in one issue of my paper, I would be like Othello. Before 24 hours, my occupation would be gone. The man who would be so foolish as to write honest opinions would be out on the street hunting for another job. The business of a New York journalist is to distort the truth, to lie outright, to pervert, to vilify, to fawn at the feet of mammon, to sell his country and his race for his daily bread, or for what is about the same, his salary. You know this, and I know it. And what foolery to be toasting and quote, independent press. We are the tools and vassals of rich men behind the scenes. We are jumping jacks. They pull the string and we dance. Our time, our talents, our lives, our possibilities are all the property of other men. We are intellectual prostitutes. End quote. Journalists, government agencies, elected officials, so many in academia, so-called experts as well. How many have sold their honor, their virtue, and their morality for a paycheck and a pension? How many? And at what cost to all life? All life. Today at this very dark hour, the scope and scale of mindless order following within our societies is beyond, truly beyond full comprehension. So few pause to ponder that we, each of us, have a responsibility to the whole, to our children, indeed to the entire web of life on which our individual lives fully depend. If the masses cannot be awakened from this state, we have no chance. And as we enter 2019, I want to state this, to all those that have summoned the courage, to fully face the unspun truth and to help in the critical battle to sound the alarm. I wish to express my deepest gratitude, my deepest thanks. In you lies humanity's only hope. Don't lose heart. We must never yield to the deception and darkness. We must never surrender, ever. Numerous breaking and dire headlines from the front line on this report. Stay tuned. This is Dane Wigington. You're listening to the Global Alert News Hour, episode number 178 for January 5th, 2019. This commercial free program is brought to you by geoengineeringwatch.org, paid for by geoengineeringwatch.org. This news hour is broadcast throughout Northern California, 1670 AM, 104.9 FM, and 105.7 FM, Saturday mornings from 6 to 7, and now rebroadcast on Sunday mornings, 6 to 7 as well. Global Alert News is also rebroadcast on the East Coast by the PRN Radio Network on Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Recordings of this broadcast can be found at geoengineeringwatch.org under the recent top stories and radio sections. Because we're being so heavily censored on so many fronts, as are other sources and sites of credible data, if you're aware of any radio station that may be willing to pick up the Commercial Free Global Alert News Hour, please let us know. We'll gladly provide the downloads of our broadcast to other stations for free. Our only goal is to sound the alarm. And by using the on-air media system, that's one way we can get the word out without being censored. We must use every tool at our disposal peacefully. If you're in the Reading area, free geoengineering watch.org information materials can be picked up from Orchard Nutrition. For those not in the Reading area, the latest geoengineering watch awareness raising materials can be ordered from the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org for our approximate cost of producing and shipping. Gym Fair, Gym Fair Events, a staunch ally in the fight to expose and halt climate engineering. They have done so much to help move this fight forward. Their event this week, Santa Rosa, California, started yesterday, ends tomorrow, Sonoma County Fairgrounds. Next week, January 11th through the 13th, Del Mar, California at the Del Mar Fairgrounds. Following week, San Rafael, California, the 18th through the 20th at Marin Center Exhibit Hall. If you're near these areas, please, Attend, get free materials, 
help circulate them, help us to bring the climate engineering issue to light. You can get into the events free if you're there to pick up materials, just tell them at the ticket booth. Show your support for Jim Fair. They have done an unimaginable amount to help our cause. The head of Jim Fair, completely committed to the fight for the greater good. He's a dear and trusted friend. Look up the Jim Fair home site, find out where the events are, show up, show your support, help us to expose the climate engineering insanity. The most complete climate engineering presentation ever produced by geoengineeringwatch.org was posted on Tuesday, January 1st at 12 p.m. Pacific time. This is a geoengineering A to Z presentation. It is extremely thorough. It can be found on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org. We hope this to be an important tool to educate individuals on the most important aspects of climate engineering and the threats it poses. An announcement for an event at the University of Missouri in St. Louis on February 7th, 2019 at 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. A climate engineering event will be held. The name of the event is Consequences of Climate Change and Climate Engineering. The goal of the event is to discuss current climate status and the destructive nature of climate engineering. The event is hosted by Benjamin Sehik. I, I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name, Ben. This is an exceptional individual that's truly, truly committed to the fight for the greater good. He's hosting this event. This event will show independent research and investigation which has led to alarming conclusions. The, pre the presentation will contain information on current climate, the current climate situation, a screening of Hacking the Planet, that's a geoengineeringwatch.org documentary, and a discussion Q&A afterward about climate engineering. I will be there for that. I, I will be Skyping into the event for that. Free materials will be at the event that will be supplied by geoengineeringwatch.org. More announcements to follow on that. Our Spanish section, for those that don't know, we have a large Spanish section on the site. Help us to share with our Spanish-speaking brothers and sisters. And my deepest gratitude to Ludovico and Pablo from South America, my brothers in this battle that have worked so tirelessly at translating so many presentations and reports from geoengineeringwatch.org. Truly, truly grateful to them. Final announcement. Threatening or militant comments will not be posted at geoengineeringwatch.org. I've stated this before. I'm going to state it again because so many put a very exceptional comment down and then torpedo it with some sort of threatening statement at the end and thus the entire comment cannot be posted. Unless you want our site to be taken down, we can't post that kind of comment. We're not abdicating in any way, shape, or form anything threatening. To even go down that road is exactly what the power structure wants. That's exactly what they want, and we cannot win this battle that way. We cannot. We have no chance without our military brothers and sisters coming over to our side and refusing to participate in the insanity. That is our only chance. And you don't get to that place by posting militant comments or violent comments. They won't be posted at our site. And also, please investigate what you post and what you try to share. Sharing links that also post all sorts of fringe data that is not credible, that doesn't help our cause either. Please consider what you post. Here's a few brief headline reports, then we'll get to even more dire frontline reports. Not that these aren't dire, but it gets worse as we go. Giraffes just silently went to the list of endangered animals facing extinction. Giraffes have been widely overlooked in conservation practices for a little too long. They just made their entry into the red list of endangered species. Let's stop there for a moment. I highlighted this only because giraffes are an incredibly iconic animal. What about the rest of the animal kingdom? What about the 80% of insects that are now gone? And how long do we possibly think we will be here without insects? We're done if they die. We're done. Oceans are dying. Giraffe is, again, just one iconic example. We are losing species at the rate of two to three hundred to extinction, plant, animal, and insect, every single day. Stop and think about that. Two to three hundred every single day. And for those that claim that's all normal, that is an unbelievably denialist, naive statement, given that that rate of extinction is one and a half million percent of normal background rates. Let's please look at facts. Moving on from the UK Telegraph, this report. Cancer breakthrough. Scientists say immune system transplant means future is incredibly bright. Quote, scientists have discovered a breakthrough treatment to fight cancer as they claim the disease will no longer be deadly for future generations. Researchers at the Francis Crick Institute in London believe it is possible to strengthen the body's defense system by transplanting immune cells from strangers. 
immunology expert Professor Adrian Hayday, group leader of the immunosurveillance lab at the Crick said scientists and doctors could become more like engineers upgrading the body rather than bombarding it with toxic chemotherapy using the body's own immune system. What a novel idea. Let's let nature do what nature does best. And after so many years, Western medicine is finally coming to that conclusion. And let's stop and clarify on this what would seem good news that future generations won't have to worry as much about cancer. This is all really a grand deception in that one, on the current course, there will not be future generations, period. Not my opinion. That's a mathematical fact if we remain in the current course. And two, why don't the so-called experts ever elude to the core causal factors of the epidemic diseases in the human race? The deception and deadly lies continue to propagate and accelerate in the ranks of the already collapsing industrialized societies. Lies like vaccines are safe. Lies like Fluoride in water is not dangerous and damaging. Lies like the medical industrial complex is searching for a cure to Alzheimer's, autism, cancer, and countless other maladies when science studies have long since existed, which clearly and inarguably reveals the core causes of these maladies, and no one dares to even mention the truth. Lies like we are seeing condensation in our skies that is absolutely, verifiably, highly toxic, unimaginably devastating climate engineering operations. Moving on, from the Asian Times, a news publication in Asia, this new and very disturbing report. Philippines become a rich world dumping ground. Just one more sign of activities of the human race, which so many want to deny the damage to the planet that it's causing. Discovery of over 5,000 tons of South Korean hazardous waste on the Philippine island of Mindanao marks a rising trend of illegal foreign dumping on the island nations. Some scientists have predicted that without a radical course shift, the world's oceans will contain more plastic than fish by 2050. That's a lie by itself. We won't be here in 2050 and the oceans will be dead. Can feel ocean. It's happening already. We must change course. So again, when these statements that such and such could, may, might by somewhere down the road decades later, not true. It's happening now. The report continues. Nearly 700 marine species are believed to have already been affected by the trash being dumped in the ocean. As I've shared on previous broadcasts, I've seen this firsthand. I've, I've seen, I've witnessed our oceans dying firsthand. The last time I dove off the Yucatan, the so-called reefs were little more than a pile of dead and broken coral, in essence a pile of rubble on the seafloor with a few lonely and bewildered small fish trying to find refuge. Absolutely heartbreaking. I've seen this kind of scene in so many places around the world. How many in first world nations truly stop to ponder where all the trash is going? Unimaginably massive amounts of trash. Several years ago I shared this on a broadcast. It was my first trip to the so-called landfill in Ontario, California. It wasn't a landfill, it was a, a land trash mountain extending up into the sky with massive bulldozers pushing unimaginable amounts of trash around. And I, I was eight or nine years old and I was profoundly affected. I couldn't imagine how any rational human being could think it was okay or that it could continue. This is burned into my mind. I have the image today as clear as if it just happened. How can this throwaway, endless consumption society on a finite planet with finite resources, how can any believe that this could continue? And we were about to find out the hard way, all of us, that it was never sustainable. But the sooner we wake, the sooner we face reality, the sooner we change direction, the greater chance there is that we may yet be able to salvage something and that is absolutely worth fighting for. Moving on, from ecowatch.com and other sources, this headline of half-truth and hypocrisy. NBC's Meet the Press devotes entire show to climate change with no time for deniers. On the denier point in the end of that headline, let's consider their denial of climate engineering. From the report, in an unusual move for the Sunday talk show circuit, NBC Meet the Press with Chuck Todd devoted an entire program Sunday to discussing climate change and only interviewed people who acknowledge that it is a serious threat. Todd said this, we're not going to debate climate change or the existence of it. The earth is getting hotter and human activity is a major cause, period. We're not going to give time to climate deniers. The science is settled, even if political opinion is not. Let's stop there for a moment. Mr. Todd. What about your denial 
of climate engineering, the massive elephant in the sky that is the single greatest disrupting factor of all, and that is saying a lot. And for those that hear me state that and then mistakenly conclude that I am not implicating other forms of human activity, that is not true. I'm simply saying intentional climate engineering operations are the single greatest factor, but by no means the only factor. Every form of human activity that affects the energy balance of the planet is a form of climate engineering. It's altering the biosphere. And by the way, for the record, the planet is currently warming. I've cited this before, but I want it to be heard. We are warming at the thermal energy equivalent rate of four to five Hiroshima bombs per second, 400,000 per day. That is very hard to get your arms around. That's how rapidly our planet is warming. Please look it up. Please don't believe me. Don't believe anything I say. I ask that repeatedly. Please just investigate. We don't face global warming. We face something far worse. We face an abrupt climate collapse. So again, for the lying, deceiving, polarizing journalists like NBC and all the talk shows, all the mainstream media, all the same, all different sides of the same coin, all intentionally trying to polarize populations. That's why they have the most divisive, often offensive commentators and guest speakers. They intend to polarize the population. This should be easy to see through for any that try. That's their job. But the hypocrisy is immense. There can be no legitimate discussion about the climate or the state of the climate without first and foremost including climate engineering, which includes, by the way, as I've stated so many times, patented processes of chemical ice nucleation for weather modification. This is engineering winter events, engineering cool downs. Before I get to that, I'll get to that in a moment, examples of that that have just occurred. First, remember and consider this. It is imperative to understand, as the biosphere collapses, the so-called economic growth and the card house economy that rests on that economic growth will collapse as well. There is no other possibility. Who could rationally believe that industrialized, militarized societies could relentlessly consume nature and natural resources forever on a finite planet with finite resources without consequence? Who could believe this, honestly? And for those who have chosen to believe the lie, the delusion is already shattering. About chemical ice nucleation for other modification, here's a recent example from last week from KOLO ABC News 8 in Las Vegas, this headline. That's a glaring red flag, again, in regard to the ongoing climate engineering operations, and more specifically, as I stated, patented processes of chemical ice nucleation for weather modification that are a major part of the climate engineering programs. Here's the headline. Snow in Las Vegas, brief and unexpected. From the report, there was a brief and unexpected snowfall in Las Vegas. The National Weather Service says snow wasn't in the forecast Thursday, but it was reported in the valley around midday. Meteorologist Ashley Wolf told the Las Vegas Review Journal that a cold front abnormally and abnormally low-hanging clouds combined to produce the strange weather. She said that the dryness underneath the clouds had a cooling effect despite the temperature being above 50 degrees. Snow falling in Las Vegas at above 50 degree temperatures. How many time, times have we tried to disclose this geoengineering watch that we have patents that state that they can chemically nucleate moisture and make snow fall at those temperatures and if they do it long enough the temperatures begin to drop at ground level. Shallow layers of cold again producing ice storms. The weather channel disinformation people trying to explain this away. Other official sources of disinformation doing the same. When does our sense of reason kick in? It should not be snowing at 50 degrees. We must all abandon official narratives, official lies, and think for ourselves. How's the snowpack doing in the Rocky Mountains? From a historical context, consider this new headline report from the CraigDailyPress.com, a newspaper from Craig, Colorado. Snowpack, snowpack has declined by an average of 41% in the Rocky Mountains over the past three decades. From that report, the snow on the ground today in Colorado was a pale shadow of what was seen a few decades ago. Recently released research reveals that today's mountain snowpack is about 41% less than it was then. And that snowpack now is very contaminated by the wave of snow that doesn't behave as naturally nucleated snow does because it's not natural. Researchers revealed their findings at the American Geophysical Union's annual meeting. The decline is attributed to climate change and the effect it is having on western seasonal patterns. A different study presented at the conference found that fall is lasting longer and summer is starting earlier, leaving much less time for the right temperature and precipitation conditions required for snow to fall on the mountains. Winter is being squeezed out. We're confident there's a significant relationship between wildfire and snow's pack, says author, PhD student, Donald O'Leary, this was stated at the conference, 
We're confident. That, this is ridiculous. Do people need a PhD to state that when forests are horrifically dried out, they're going to burn faster? This is what academia tells us. We have academia doing, as I cited in previous broadcasts, a three-year study on Greenland. After three years and, and dozens of scientists, they come up with the conclusion, yes, the ice is melting and running into the water. Does it take three years and dozens of scientists with countless degrees to come up with such a conclusion? We live in an asylum. And what aren't these scientists telling us? As I alluded to the secrecy in the beginning of this broadcast, they are not telling us about the climate engineering elephant in the room, which is the single greatest causal factor for drought on the planet today. Single greatest causal factor. You cannot have less overall precipitation on a warming planet without a factor that we are not being told about, and that factor is climate engineering. The greatest and most immediate threat we collectively face short of nuclear cataclysm. Academia, over and over and over, lying. Moving on, so-called winter storm fissure was the latest chemical ice nucleation creation of the climate engineers, with moisture again, yet again, straight out of the record warm Gulf of Mexico. In the coming days, a tropical system may form in the eastern Pacific. The paid disinformation actors at the Weather Channel said this was, quote, unusual, but that's a lie. If the system forms, if the climate engineers let it form, it would not only be, quote, unusual, it would be absolutely unprecedented. No tropical system has formed in the eastern Pacific before the month of May since record keeping began. Paid disinformation actors at the Weather Channel, look in the mirror, find your courage. And by the way, I cited this in a broadcast about two years ago. The head modeling expert at the Weather Channel was suicided in the Weather Channel garage. His car accelerated out of control into a concrete wall. And his family, friends, everyone who knew him said this was absolutely not like him. Do, have we ever heard of such a suicide right in one's own work just accelerating into a wall? from someone who, again, family and friends said would absolutely not do this, and this is the person at the Weather Channel that was most likely to have seen through the, the scheduled weather models being passed down, the script that's being read by those at institutions like the Weather Channel, suicided. That was a warning shot to the rest. But if those others don't find their courage and stand up together and tell the truth, all of us go down with the ship. All of us. Hiding will not save you. Hiding in your cabin on the sinking Titanic will not save you. Yet more headlines on the stratospheric warming scenario. This latest report from the data site severeweather.eu and other sources. This report is from January 3rd, 2019. Sudden stratospheric warming underway mid-late January could see some serious winter weather across a large part of Europe. Listen carefully to this report. An SSW, severe stratospheric warming event, caused by ionosphere heaters that this report, of course, will not state usually has the strongest impact over the North Pole. High pressure can be expected to build over and around the Arctic region, which enables colder Arctic air masses to affect far south into mid-latitudes, pushing cold air from the Arctic to further create engineered winter events, to further pacify populations, to further confuse and divide them as to the true state of climate collapse until the last possible moment. That's what this is about. The report continues. We can expect to see colder air move into Europe in the next two to three weeks with more proper winter weather, in other words, we haven't had much winter yet, and even snow for Eastern and Central Europe, as if that should be surprising in a normal world. That could continue into February. Engineering winter. Keep in mind, for those that drive snow and, and have, had, have historically driven in the snow without issue, which I did as a boy in the San Gabriel Mountains, it is completely different now. It's a completely different material. It's it's heavier, denser in most cases, not all, depends on the conditions and the elements used, but it is often extremely slick. Why? Because of surfactants. Surfactants, the same that is used in soap. It's part of the, the mix of spray dispersions. We know this from elements and materials data from companies like American Elements Corporation, we believe one of the primary suppliers of the climate engineering materials, surfactants in the mix. So if the snow seems incredibly slick and incredibly cold to the touch, that's because it is. Chemically nucleated, very cold to the touch, and very slick. And by the way, for our weather conditions in Northern California, never in the month of January have I not been able to generate hydropower. My streams are nearly dry. So for those that think there's still no ongoing drought, that's not true. And even though Northern California has been scheduled to receive some precipitation during the coming week, climate engineers have continued 
to block much of the flow of precipitation into Northern California. Again, this is not an opinion. It's a verifiable fact that can be confirmed inarguably by anyone who takes the time to examine global satellite imagery, which clearly reveals geoengineering solar radiation management operations being conducted off the North American West Coast every single day. The completely unnatural climate engineering altered cloud formations are unimaginably different from cloud and storm formations that were once seen on satellite imagery in decades past. Our meteorologists absolutely know what is occurring, but they have so far unfortunately chosen to play the part of power structure paid actors by their pretending that climate engineering is not occurring, and thus not a part of the equation. Such a conclusion, again, is verifiably false for any that show the courage to examine the facts and admit to the truth. This headline report from QZ.com and numerous other sources. Greenland is melting, even in winter, and Canada's glaciers are terminally warm. From this report, cold weather is usually good for ice. How, what a simpleton statement. Do we not know that? We have to have experts tell us that. And the Earth's cryosphere, which is the ice deposits. The report states, quote, it's just not cold enough anymore. Hundreds of meters below the ocean's surface, giant waves of warm water are surging up into Greenland's fjords, coming in contact with ice sheets and causing melting even in winter, according to a paper published this week by a team from the Scottish Association for Marine Science and John Hopkins University. Another headline from Nature.com, methane beneath Greenland's ice sheet is being released. From that report, methane produced in sediments beneath Greenland's ice sheet is being released in the atmosphere by meltwater in the summer. This suggests that glacial melt could be an important global source of this greenhouse gas. Again, there's no could, there's no may, there's no might. We need the so-called experts to behave morally and honestly and tell us the full truth, not half-truths. From the Washington Times and other sources, this new report on what is occurring in the Arctic. U.S. Navy deflects muscles in the Arctic. Opportunity for conflict is only rising. Quote, limited capacity and lack of icebreakers forces the U.S. to play catch-up as melting seas opens up sea lanes. From that report, the U.S. Navy is preparing to take a page from its South China strategy with plans to eventually carry out quote, freedom of navigation missions through the Arctic as the geopolitical scramble for dominance heats up while the long iced in sea passages thaw. Development economists say as much as 35 trillion in oil and natural gas, gold, silver and diamond, copper, titanium, graphite, uranium and rare earth elements is vital to high tech industries and could become accessible if ice sheets continue to retreat. Of course they're going to continue to retreat. Many scientists say climate change is making the prospect inevitable. The US Navy has already begun increasing its presence in the Arctic Circle. In October, the USS Harry Truman Carrier Strike Group conducted its first ever joint naval operations above the Arctic Circle with the Canadian Navy. The next step could be freedom, quote, freedom of navigation operations focusing on the so-called Northern Sea Route. This is about, this is insane. The human race's behavior is absolutely insane. Instead of behaving as if we want to continue surviving on this planet and focusing every, everything on trying to salvage what is yet left of Earth's life support systems. Instead, the military industrial complex and the societies that support them are all for looting, plundering, and pillaging what's left of Earth's resources until there is nothing left, and that is in the very, very near term. Total insanity from our species so far. But again, my thanks to those who are awake and aware and trying to alter the current paradigm. Our efforts matter in and of themselves. Another headline from the National Snow and Ice Data Center. This new headline report on Antarctica. Down under. A record low start to the new year in Antarctica. On January 1st, Antarctic sea ice extent stood at the lowest ever for this time of year in the satellite records since record keeping began. This value is 30,000 square kilometers, 11,000 square miles below the previous record, which was set in 2017 and 180 and 1.88 million square kilometers below the established average, which was already below the historical average, pre-industrial. Extent declined at a rate of 253,000 square kilometers per day through December, considerably faster than the 1981 to 2010 average. For those who are still beating all sorts of false narratives, coming ice age, that the solar minimum is going to cool the planet, there, None of those narratives are accurate. Please do the research. The solar minimum is such an insignificant factor against the backdrop of human damage to the planet. It's completely negligible. Even the Maunder minimum, as I've stated in previous broadcasts, was only 0.025% solar irradiance decline. 
That's one four hundred. That means nothing. The planet is not just warming, it's incinerating. The data is everywhere. Please, again, investigate what you subscribe to or what you post or what you try to share. If we're going to expose climate engineering, we must stand on solid data. And that is an acknowledgement that, yes, the planet is in total meltdown, and climate engineering, in the attempt to hide that fact, is actually fueling the overall fire and toxifying the entire planet in the process. Please stand on solid, credible building blocks of data and conclusions. From CBC Canada, Canada Mainstream Media, this recent and very alarming report, which lends yet more confirmation to the database conclusions geoengineeringwatch.org has published for over a decade. Here's the headline. Building blocks of ocean food web in rapid decline as plankton productivity plunges. For the record, yet another factor in the converging catastrophes which we collectively face. No plankton, no people. Very simple. From the report, senior DFO scientist says the cause of the collapse is, quote, unknown. The report goes on to say this. Alarm bells are going off. So what's causing this dramatic decline? Question mark. Scientists here haven't detected anything in particular that can be linked to the plunge in productivity, but they are worried. This is absurd. Academia is paid not to know. There are so many obvious factors affecting the plankton, starting with, starting with climate engineering destroying the ozone layer, which releases intense radiation, which kills the plankton that have to feed in the upper layers of the water column because they photosynthesize. It's killing them. Intense UV radiation, so many roads lead right back to climate engineering. Again, not as a sole causal problem to the threats we face, not at all. So many forms of human activity. We have cut down the forest, paved the planet, poisoned everything, our waters, our seas, our airs. The human race has been unimaginably poor stewards, but climate engineering, single greatest factor in the equation we face. We must disclose this issue. What do global powers do as the biosphere collapses and they know they're running out of options? They trigger more war and conflict. But many would argue, wait, the occupant of the White House is going to pull our troops out of Syria, right? No, not really. Let's look past the smoke and mirrors. From the NavyTimes.com and other sources, this dose of reality. Here's the headline. Mattis is out and Blackwater is back. Quote, we are coming. Mattis' resignation comes amid news that President Donald Trump has directed the drawdown of 2,000 forces in Syria and 7,000 forces from Afghanistan, a U.S. official confirmed to Military Times, a story first reported by the Wall Street Journal. This month in the January-February print issue of Gun and Hunting magazine, quote, Recoil, the former contractor security firm Blackwater, Private Mercenaries, USA, published a full-page ad in all black with a simple message, we are coming, end quote. Is the war in Afghanistan and possibly elsewhere about to be privatized? If Blackwater returns, it would be the return of a private security contractor that was banned from Iraq, but rebranded and never really went away. By 2016, Blackwater had been renamed and restructured several times. Private mercenaries replacing U.S. troops. That is not reducing conflict. It is simply privatizing it. Further movement toward the fascist society that we now live in. From RTTV and other sources, this headline, Saudi-led coalition accused of using Sudanese child mercenaries like firewood to fuel the Yemen fire. This is yet another example of Saudi atrocities. And what countries are the devoted allies of Saudi Arabia, the US and the UK? Why? Does that question even need to be answered? Because of Saudi oil and because the Saudis are top customers of the U.S. and U.K. weapons of mass destruction industry, weapons that are being used at this very moment to slaughter innocents in Yemen, including children, and mercenaries, again, as this headline states, being used to further fuel that conflict. Yemen is currently the greatest humanitarian disaster in modern history. Why don't we hear about the rapidly increasing crimes being carried out in Washington? Consider this new headline report from multiple sources. War on Transparency. U.S. agency plans crackdown on information requests. The current administration criticized for trying to make it harder to obtain records of Interior Department dealings. Not transparency. Secrecy, secrecy, as I disclosed in the beginning of this broadcast. The Trump administration officials have taken steps to crack down on transparency at one of the largest U.S. federal agencies proposing a slew of changes that would make it harder for the public and media to obtain records of agency dealings. The proposal is part of an effort to grapple with what the Interior Department describes as unprecedented surge in requests in the, under the Freedom of Information Act uh, provision, FOIA. 
as I've stated before, our attorneys at geoengineeringwatch.org had to sue the U.S. Department of Commerce in order to force the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration to release FOIAs to us, which they're legally required to do. And now the current administration is trying to further push our government into the shadows so that the public has no idea what's going on behind the scenes. Is that draining the swamp? Is that making America great again? It's all a facade. I don't care who occupies the White House. It's all a facade. And when will people from all sides of the fence realize that those in power that pretend to be on individual sides of the fence are all part of the same cancerous cabal? All of them. The report continues. This is a war on transparency, said Jeremy Nichols, the Climate and Energy Program Director at Wild Earth Guardians, an environmental group that regularly files FOIA requests and which first flagged the Interior Department's proposal. Quote, this is a calculated attempt to shield the Interior Department from scrutiny, to shield it from watchdogs, and to shield it from accountability. Again, so much for draining the swamp. People need to understand our government is a criminal cabal at this point with legions of what can only be described as honorless order followers. That's the unfortunate fact of the matter. What is the government trying to hide from us? Again, the severity and immediacy of what is unfolding. Militarized, industrialized society has always been a death sentence. That's why the course of the human race must be completely altered or we have no chance. But those in power are sending some warnings. Consider this report. DHS, Department of Homeland Security, says Americans need to start prepping for up to six months without electricity, as if the electricity will somehow magically come on after six months. From multiple sources, a new report from the President's National Infrastructure Advisory Council and published by the Department of Homeland Security says the government is urging the public to prepare for up to six months without electricity, transportation, fuel, money, or health care. Department of Homeland Security is warning that the electric grid is now the, quote, prime target of terrorists. Just like 9-11 was terrorists, correct? No, not correct. 9-11 was absolutely and arguably carried out by elements inside our own government. But the terrorist term is used to polarize the population into blind support for those in power, being used here as well. The report says... Americans need to be prepared for power outages of up to six months. The report says that, quote, people no longer keep enough essentials within their homes, reducing their ability to sustain themselves during an extended, prolonged outage. We need to improve individual preparedness, end quote. The Department of Homeland Security report was titled, Surviving a Catastrophic Power Outage. The report warned that an attack would likely come with little or no notice and could cause complete chaos for at least a half a year, as if that chaos would somehow magically get better after half a year. Total fallacy. The report goes on to state, quote, Power outages would likely be long duration, lasting several weeks to months, parentheses at least two months, but more likely six months or more, due to physical destruction of equipment, such as transformers or transmission lines, or the severity of the event resulting in limited workforce to repair damage or inability to create or transport replacement parts. All stated in the report. The report recommends Americans have enough supplies on hand for a minimum of 14 days, a number that now seems grossly inadequate considering the threat and the timeline for reestablishing essential services after such an attack. When the biosphere collapse, when nature that has historically provided 75% of all GDP for free, now no longer, any notion that there would be a, quote, rebuilding after such a collapse is not a realistic notion. It's not. The changes that are coming are permanent from any rational perspective. The reality we have known is done. Can we save some part of Earth's life support systems? That remains to be seen, and that depends on what each of us does or doesn't do. The report continues. This profound risk requires a new national focus. Significant public and private action is needed to prepare for and recover from a catastrophic outage that could leave the large parts of the nation without power for weeks or months and cause service failures in other sectors, including water and wastewater, communications, transportation, health care, and financial services that are critical to public health and safety and our nation and economic security, said the Advisory Council. The report is the second in the last month to warn of a, quote, profound threat to the U.S. electric grid from terrorism and events like a solar storm or solar flare. 
As I've reported in numerous global alert news broadcasts, climate engineering yet again a part of this equation. Climate engineering has further fueled the destruction of Earth's protective atmosphere. This leaves us much more vulnerable to a CME, coronal mass ejection, i.e. solar flare. In regard to terrorism, again, 9-11, stunning example of false flag. The terrorism word used to trigger conformity in the U.S. population that is choosing to believe anything, everything they're told from official sources without investigating. This is the type of mindless order following that, again, I spoke about in the beginning of this broadcast. Report continues. A prior government report also recommended presidential action to protect the grid from attacks. Just like the so-called Patriot Act after 9-11, government instituting means by which it can control populations as the biosphere collapses. Again, a reminder about the 2010 census in which every citizen of this country had their doorstep gps Why? Because drones can be used to deal with any civilian that the government perceives as a threat to exposing its criminal behavior. That's why. Why else would Homeland Security and other agencies purchase 2.4 billion rounds of 40 caliber hollow point ammunition? And who could put all that to use? How could those in power carry out such diabolical means of subduing populations because of the same types of order followers that Daniel Ellsberg spoke about that I alluded to again in the beginning of this broadcast? That's who would carry this out. That qu equation must be changed. It must be changed if we are to have any chance of survival. Even on the short-term horizon, the report continues with this expert. The U.S. military has warned an EMP-style attack could wipe out the United States, democracy, and world order. They also warned that, quote, 99 reactors would likely melt down without el electricity to cool them. Millions would be displaced from areas around the nuclear plants as radioactive clouds spread. This is not an if, it's a when, and it's not just in the U.S., it's all over the world. We have truly painted ourselves into a very dark corner. Report continues, bases would be cut off, making defense and counterattacks impossible. Again, all of this from the Department of Homeland Security report released. Civil unrest would start in hours. Power and GPS could go dark and EMP would cause instantaneous and simultaneous loss of many technologies reliant on electrical power and computer circuit boards such as cell phones and GPS devices. Quote, failures may include long-term loss of electric power due to the loss of emergency generators, sewage, freshwater, banking, landlines, cellular service, vehicles, and other forms of technology. Final excerpt from the report. 18 months or more is required to replace key elements of the electric grid that would be damaged or knocked out. This is a warning. Mainstream media is not publicizing it. Public's not listening anyway. The collapse of industrialized, militarized society is imminent. Indeed, it's already unfolding. Let's consider a quote in closing from Mark Twain. Twain said this, Man is the only patriot. He sets himself apart in his own country under his own flag and sneers at the other nations and keeps multitudinous uniformed assassins on hand at heavy expense to grab slices of other people's countries and keep them from grabbing slices of his own. And in the intervals between campaigns of war, he washes the blood off his hands and works for the universal, quote, brotherhood of man, but only with his mouth. Question. How epidemic is false patriotism. How many tyrants are there hiding behind the flag of false patriotism, the refuge of honorless order followers? What we collectively face will not seem real until it is real, and that time is now very near. Some are choosing to simply abandon any sense of responsibility to the whole. Some have decided to double down on the fossil fuel fiesta until the brutal, bitter end. But this is not the correct path. Why do we have a conscience, a sense of honor, of reason, of virtue, if not to fully utilize these gifts? These are our greatest gifts, all that we can truly call our own. If abandoned, we have nothing of value left, nothing. It is never too late to commit to doing the right thing, regardless of the odds against success. Doing the right thing is always the right thing. It's always the correct path. Why are we here if not to make such a conscious decision? 
We can yet make a difference, even at this late hour, but we must collectively stand and courageously face the gathering storm together, without fear, without trepidation. All of us are needed in the critical battle to sound the alarm, to fully awaken populations. Reaching a critical mass of awareness is the first and most critical leap forward in this fight to turn the tide. Make your voice heard. Share credible data from a credible source. Make every day count. Until next week, this is Dane Wigginton with geoengineeringwatch.org.